Hi. In the last video, I did a review of this Unity UTG 1042X arbitrary waveform generator, and as promised, we'll do a teardown in this video. If you have not watched that video, I will put the link in the card here and would recommend you checking it out. And if you wanted to find more information on Unity's website, I will provide the link in the video description below as well. Anyway, I'm actually very curious to see what's inside, as besides the enhanced output resolution and a few additional features, the 1042X is largely comparable to the 962E, as you can see here, but the 962E is much more compact compared to the 1042X we have here. Just by casual look though, I don't see any screw holes here. There's no screw holes to be found anywhere. You can see everything is covered. It seems that these are potentially the screw hole here, as we do have this cover or sticker over top here. And you can see there's nothing at the bottom. There's nothing on this side either. So I think we'll have to remove the stickers before we can get in. Let me just do that. Let's uh, try this one. All right, let's see if that is the cover. Yep, as you can see, the screw is right underneath here. So unfortunately, I have to peel these off and I don't think I can stick them back. That's okay. All right, now I have removed all the screws here. Let's uh, see if we can open it up. Back seems to just should be popping up. Oh, okay, so the front came out. Oh boy, everything's falling apart here. So let me try to get the back coming out first. Oh, actually, hang on. Let me remove this ribbon cable here. Well, I guess this is not surprising. I somewhat speculated this. As you can see here, I have taken everything out. And the case is largely just empty because we have a power supply at the back panel here and all the circuitry is on the front panel here. So basically most of the case is actually empty inside and we only have circuitry on the front panel and the rear here. In theory, if Unity really want to cram everything into the same form factor as the UTG 962E, I'm sure they could do that as well. But obviously this form factor is probably much easier to handle, especially in a lab setting. All right, let's take a look at the power supply module first. And by the look up here, you can see we don't actually have a whole lot going on on this power module. Now, it looks a little bit busy because we also have the USB port here. And there is some additional circuitry to support that. Now, if you look at the power supply here, you will see it is actually fairly well made. The earth ground is tied to the chassis, and you can see we do have a separate tab. This one screws into the main case. So the case essentially is tied to the earth ground. And this power supply is based on a single chip design. If you look at the chip here, not sure how well it shows up, but it is an Unsemi FSQ0165R offline switcher. So that essentially is handling the switching power supply here. And you can see the board is Unity branded. And we do have a quite a few supply rails outputting from this power supply. If you take a look at the silk screen on the main board here, you will see that we have, by the look of it, 7.5 volts plus minus, and we also have, looks like it's a 17 volts. I can't really read it, but we do have four rails coming out from this power supply. All right, I just took out the main board, and also I had removed the heat sink so we can take a closer look here. The general layout is slightly different than what we found in the 962E, and that is mainly because the output here is actually on the front panel, whereas in the 962E, the output is from the side. So they have to rearrange some of the components. Also, we're using different DAC and different FPGA. Towards the left side of the board, you can see we have the input sections for the two channels. These are separated out by this vertical shielding here. The layout is actually not symmetrical, but you can definitely see we have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 relays for channel 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 relays for channel 2. And these components are also one set for each channel. Each channel has one of these GS333 comparators and also a 3092, that is a current feedback op-amp. 
the current feedback op amp obviously is to drive the output. And on the far right, that's our application processor, which is a STM32. Underneath the application processor, we have a EEPROM here, and also we have a Winbond flash memory chip. Towards the left, we also have an SRAM, and we have a couple of regulators. These are also under the heatsink. And up here, the larger chip, that's an FPGA, which is not surprising. The part number is GW2A-LV16. And finally, we have our key component here. That's a AD9122, a 16-bit, 1.2 gig samples per second output DAC. This DAC is actually quite expensive. It is priced at roughly $44 for a quantity of 1,000 pieces. And that's pretty much everything that is on this side of the board. So let me flip it over. On the back side of the board, we do have quite a bit of components here. I just looked through, most of these are actually just regulators. And some of these are switching regulators, some of these are linear regulators. And also we have quite a few op amps as well. This main board does plug into the display via these two rows of headers, as you can see here. And this is the display board here, and you can see there's not a whole lot going on. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this brief teardown video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you next time.